Everyone good? Is everyone okay? All good stuff. Well, hello, I'm Callum Oakley. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've, uh, I've got an older brother, an older half-sister, an older half-brother. They're all like grown up now. I'm, I'm a teenager. They're all grown up. We've all got like full beards and stuff, including my sister. But it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard being the youngest, you know, because I'm a teenager. There's a three year difference between me and my brother. Like he went to school before me. He made a good name for himself, you know. He was good to the teachers. Always done his coursework on time. Always had perfect uniform. He was always good to the students. And then there was me. He was a bit of a tit, right? Because I just, I just completely ruined it, right? My brother, he loved PE. He was in all the teams, you know, like rugby. The school thought they'd put me in rugby because my brother was in rugby. I don't understand rugby. Why would you pass the ball backwards to go forwards? Why are you making things harder for yourself? Why don't you just pass the ball forwards? And everyone just gets along easy. I was playing, they threw the ball to me. I had a team of lads just charging towards me. I'm not prepared to protect this egg-shaped bag of air. I was like, there you go, you have that. You have that. It's so much easier. And then my brother had done boxing as well. So mum and dad thought they'd put me in boxing. I'll be honest, I'm not much of a man's man. Right? I'd rather do something more useful in my day. I'd rather go for like, like a pamper. Like a, like a little pamper day. Like I'd treat myself, I'd get my nails done and all that. You know? Like at the end of the day, you know, I'd go home to my mum and dad. They'd be like, what have you done today, Callum? You know, after boxing, just dragging my knuckles across the floor. Got my nose over it, I'm covered in blood and I just smell like a ball bag. Right? I'd rather go home. My mum and dad be like, what have you done today, Callum? I'm like, well, funny enough, you know, I had a little pamper day. <laughs> Got my nails done and all that. If you look on my index finger, I've got a diamond that really brings out the eyes. You know, I'd rather do that. You know, but I'm not good with girls. I'm bloody terrible with girls, I'll be honest, right? I'll be out on a night out. I'll be on the dance floor trying to act cool. I'll have my drink in my hand and I'll be dancing. I'll be dancing away. <laughs> Cheers, right? Dancing away, and they'd be these two girls, they'd be talking, they'd be like, hey, look at him, he's quite cool, I'll go and talk to him, he's all right, isn't he? The girl will come up, they'll go, hi, are you okay? What I'm meant to say is, hey, you're beautiful, can I get you a drink? But there's like this thing in the back of my mind, and I just get all excited, and like, oh, company, oh, there's a girl, I just start getting dead excited, I'm like, hey, you're beautiful, can I get you a drink? I'm just dragging her by her head, slamming her head on the bar, four Jager shots, go, 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 just slamming her in the face. I'm not good with girls, right? And I, <laughs> <laughs> right? And I've got like this little story, right? I met this girl called Caitlin, right? It was the first time I met her, and the last time I met her, all in one day, right? <laughs> I went to her house and knocked on the door, right? Her mum came out, she was like a typical mother where I live, right? She had like a full velvety tracksuit on. She had like juicy across the bum cheeks, right? They were tucked into these old boots and all her hair was just dubbing this bum, right? She didn't like me one bit. Nice one, right? So she, so she came to the door, right? And she was like, what do you want? Right? And I was like, is Caitlin there, please? Right, so she turned around and she went, Caitlin, the door! She came down, she came outside, Caitlin, she looked lovely. I was talking to her, I was like, you all right? Having a bit of banter and all that, right? Talking to her, and mum just didn't like me. She just looked at me from head to toe, to toe to head. And she said this to Caitlin, she went, Caitlin, do you want your rape whistle? Hard stop, right? I was like, Jesus Christ, love, right? So I had to think of something quick, something snappy. I was like, don't worry, Caitlin's mum, don't worry one bit. She doesn't need a rape whistle, right? If she feels threatened or endangered in any way, I will be her rape whistle and she can just blow me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't go down well, I'll be honest. <laughs> You know, but uh, I've, you know, it's like a new year and everything now. I'm one of those annoying people. You know, like new year, new me and all that. It's like I'm going on a diet. So I joined the gym. I've done the gym and everything. You have to have like an induction to the gym. Like this woman, she was showing us around. There's like four of us who joined that day. There was these two girls, they were beautiful. Right, big boobs, perfect body, the bum. They were standing there like, mm. And then there was this lad, right? He was just built like an athlete. He was muscly. He was standing there like, and then there was me, who just loves the smell of bacon. <laughs> so she was showing us around all this equipment, right? And she went to these two girls, you shows how it's done on the cycling machine. So these two girls, they got on the cycling machine, they're on it. And the girls are like, ah, ah, ah. right? And then she went to the man, you shows how it's done on the running machine. So the lad got on the running machine, he was on it. Right, I'm thinking, this is brilliant, this is all I need. I'm just here for the fitness, that's it. Right? And now she went, now you, 
shows how it's done. On the weight machine, I'm thinking, bloody hell, look, right? But I can't say that out loud. If anything, I'm trying to impress these two beautiful girls, right? So I was like, yeah, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for the weight, right? So I walked over, and what you do is you sit down here, and you have this bar, and you pull down on the bar. As you pull down on the bar, there's these weights, and the weights go up and down. I didn't know that. She thought I knew that. I'm sitting down, I've got my hands on this bar, and I'm just swinging a bit. It's quite easy, isn't it? I'm just looking at the girls, like, oh, look at me. One hand. No hands. Right? And at this point, this woman started getting really angry with me. Right? She was like, you meant to pull on it. I was like, all oh, right, you should have said, right? Okay, chill out, right? I've got my hands in this bar. And she started getting really angry. She was like, you meant to pull on it. And I was like, I am. She was like, pulling it, I was like, I am. She was like, pulling it, I was like, I am. She was like, pulling it, I was like, I am. And I just started getting really angry. And all this aggression just started building up inside me. And I was like, ah! And I just pulled down this bar as hard as I could, and the bar just blew down. I was like, ah! <laughs> so the gym isn't for me, right? I didn't get them girls either, but you know, we move on. But it's a big step, it's a big step going to the gym. Like the gym changing rooms, Jesus Christ, right? I'm used to the BE changing rooms in school. Right, the one rule in school about the change rooms is you don't look at anyone getting changed. That is like the golden rule. You walk in like, hey lad, are you looking? Hey, hey lad, are you looking? Lad, 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 you looking? You walk into the gym change room like, hey lad, are you looking? Hey, I can clap without no hands, look at that lad. Look, lad. Hey. Honestly, God, I walked in, it's like going through like a meaty jungle. I'm just going through everything, like, it's like jungle book, I'm just going through it. And there was this one lad, completely naked, just leaning against the wall, right? Hair down to his shoulders, hand the moustache, you don't talk to him, you don't even look at him. Completely naked, he's got a third leg, and he's just standing there, right? Honestly, it was massive, you could push him in the back and he'll just stop himself. It's like a tripod, <laughs> an anchor, it's like, <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> and it had me thinking, right? He was definitely that kid in school who had puberty before anyone else, right? Because everyone's got that one memory of school, and unfortunately, that's mine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you because I'm proper kind and that. So uh, we were in year seven, we were like we were halfway through the year, and in the PE change rooms, we just like pull each other's shorts down, laugh at each other's willies, like we cocktail sausage and that. Right? And he was just one lad, he got changed on his own in the corner. Shouldn't have picked that on the start. He was just born with a beard, right? And I went over and I pulled his shorts down. As he turned around, this thing just swept the whole of the change room. It was like watching total wipeout. We were jumping, ducking, diving, dodging, right? I haven't seen so many shot 12 to 13 year old boy faces in all my life. We're all just standing there watching this, this windmill of destruction. <laughs> I just went out, I just looked at him dead in the eyes and I was like, bloody hell, I just shook his hand and I was like, well done, son, well. The fact that he shook it, I shook his willy. And I was like, well done. Even the PE staff, they were on it. Well, they're like, bloody hell, man. <laughs> but you know, a lot, a lot of like weird things happened to me. Like I was on the bus. That's not weird, but you know, I'll <laughs> explain. And it was in November, the reason why I'm a bit is because of Movember. You know, we're like men or some women, they like shave all around here and they grow like a mustache do for like charity or just for a bit of fun, right? And so I'm sitting on the bus, just me on my own. These two girls, they come on, they sit right by me, proper ugly, right? The horrible, just the mouth on them is disgusting, right? So they're sitting there and one of the girls just come on, she goes, ah, I can't believe it. Oh, Craig, me fella, he's doing that Movember, isn't he, that Movember, right? Which your mate replies like, oh, girl, what's that? She says, well, basically, Movember, they shave all around here and they grow like a moustache, they grow like a muzzy for a month, a muzzy. And she went, well, aren't you into fellas with a bit of facial hair? And she went, nah, right? And she went, well, you're gonna have to say something, you're gonna have to say something to this Craig, aren't you? And she went, well, you know what, funny enough, we were at Craig's Mars last night, we were at his mother's, yeah, and I just went over, I just got him by the scruff of the neck, and I threw him down on that couch, and I just stood over him, and I said, right, Craig, listen here, yeah, if you aren't shaving for a month, neither am I. <laughs> Not the best thing to hear in the morning, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I get on with it. But uh, I think that's me, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's my, my little set done. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. I'm, I'm really happy to be performing this lovely venue. It's absolutely been brilliant. I've been Callum Oakley. Enjoy the rest of your night. Good night. God bless. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Callum Oakley. What I am. Um...
what I didn't tell you before Callum came on is that at the Comedy Store in uh, both London and Manchester, there is a long-held tradition that new acts come and do 10 minutes. So it's Callum's first time ever, he doesn't get paid. It's how people get into this club. One more time for Callum Oakley. 17 years old, so... Um, genuinely, 17. And uh, that's how people start. That's, because we can't, we have to do it here to learn how to do it. We can't practice in our bedrooms like you can with your jobs. Um, <laughs> I don't know what your jobs are. So practice, you know, that's your job, practice. All right, fair enough. Um, I admire people that work in sales. Sales people impress me. Hey! I'll tell you why salespeople impress me, because you're the sort of people who respond well to targets. You're the kind of guys that have a boss come in and go, OK, guys, I've got a whole new set of targets for this quarter. And salespeople go, fucking yeah! Let me have the targets. I'm not just going to achieve mine. I'm going to surpass them. I properly admire that, you know, because I know what I'd be like in the equivalent situation. And I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to have to get another job. <laughs> Again. Why do they keep bringing in targets? It's not my thing. I do not respond well to motivation. I'm not a motivation kind of character. I couldn't be a business.